what we have here is our bouncing ball animation. Uh, you can select the ball and you can see that we have a graph editor down here which you can get to by clicking on this icon where it's got half grid and half graph. So if you're in here you can go, go to there and maybe adjust the sizes a little bit. I have a really small my window here. Anyways, um, this channel editor on the right is something that we might need to get to as well. Um, you can get to it through these three buttons. This is attribute editor, um, tool editor, and channel editor. And I prefer using the channel editor for some reason. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, uh, if we click on this frame all button in the graph editor, we can see our nice little graph of the bounce and a little line that shows us what frame we're on as we play back. Um, so I just translate Y. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit. Anyways, what we want to do is actually squash the ball. And there's multiple ways to do it. You could, if you'd like, just you know scale it. But um, unfortunately, that doesn't look very convincing. A ball will actually you know, gain volume as it squashes, or um, it will stay the same volume. So what we're going to do is actually use a deformer. So if you go to Animation menu and choose Create Deformers, Nonlinear, and Squash, right here, that'll add a Squash Deformer. And it's a really nice deformer because it basically is there just to squash um, whatever it's deforming. So make sure you have the ball selected when you add the deformer. Uh, that way it'll automatically you know, add the Squash Deformer to your ball. Um, now what we can do is in the channel editor you can click on squash one and there's this factor here. Uh, if you click on it, it turns black, it means you've selected it, the channel. Uh, if you go back into your 3D view and drag the middle mouse button, you can um, preview what it's doing. All right. Uh, you can do the same in the attribute editor as well, but um, Actually, you can't do the dragging in the view. You can only change the value. So if I go to squash one, um, I can change the factor here. You can still set keys here, just um, channel editor takes up less space. Uh, anyways, now we've got it squashed a little bit, right? So let's play it back. Ooh, that looks kind of weird. And it doesn't really work everywhere. Well, that's a problem. We want this deformer to follow the ball so that as the ball bounces we can change the squash on the ball you know relative to the ball so we're going to go ahead and we're going to parent the squash deformer to the ball so in order to parent something you select the, the child first and then you select the ball the ball is going to be the parent and then you say parent uh, you, well you couldn't see the menu because it's too long but I, I did parent and now if I select the ball and move it around the deformer follows it, which means that when I play back the animation, the deformer still follows it. And right now, there's uh, the ball is just staying squashed the whole time. Well, obviously, we want to animate it, so it's not always squashed. Um, so we're actually going to start at zero, and we're going to go ahead to the frame where it hits the bottom stair, and we're going to squash it a little bit. set key. Key selected. Um, you, you might not have seen that menu. Uh, if you hold down the right mouse button and choose key selected, it's uh, just like in lab uh, with the translate Y and translate X. Anyways, um, now we see that we only inserted a key at this frame, so we have to go back here and set it back to zero. And um, set key. Keys, or key selected. So now we've got a nice little animation, and then it squashes. Uh, unfortunately, a ball normally has to hit the surface before it starts squashing. So we're actually going to come close to where it hits, hits the surface. All right. Uh, that's where it hits the surface, so we're going to go a couple frames back, maybe you know one frame back, and we're going to actually elongate it because as the ball goes down, it's going to you know start stretching out because it's high velocity or, or something. And then we can add a key there. Bang. See? Boing. Okay, now we just have to keep doing that. So, what we actually have here is when it goes up, it's going to want to get all, it's going to, you know, bounce and stretch out maybe around here and then flatten out again into sphere and then stretch again and then bang. So, we're going to do that right now. So, we're going to go here, 
maybe around here, and we're actually going to elongate it and set a frame. And then um, right before it hits here, we're going to elongate it. Set frame. Okay. Boing. And then we're going to do the same as it comes out. It's going to elongate. And then it's going to elongate as it approaches. Okay. So now we should have our nice bouncing. bounces and it kind of it jiggles a little bit because that's what it looks like. <laughs> Anyways, it looks it's almost done. However, if we were to zoom in close and watch as it hits the surface, it doesn't actually touch the surface. See, we have a little bit of room still. So, in order to fix that, we're going to use the graph editor. And we're now we're going to work on the ball because we want the ball to actually drop further. Since the squash deformer works from the center, we will have to uh, move the ball down when it hits the surface, which is actually pretty simple in the graph editor. We have our graph editor, we go to the frame where it's supposed to be down, and we can click on the point, translate Y point. Um, make sure the move tool's on, and then middle mouse drag up and down to move it. Do the same for the next point. In fact, why don't we do it for the next two points at the same time, since we can, since it's, uh, it's going to be the same height difference if we use the same setting for these two, which we did. So you can actually select both of them, and then middle mouse drag, move it down, and now it's contacting, and lo and behold, it also contacts here, although it's actually kind of off the stair in this case, but um, we're not going to worry about that. So now we have our ball, the deformer.